So, um, yeah, I think it is. I think it is your turn to introduce this. Go. Uh, I shall go and do that. I read. <laughs> Let me let me <laughs> let me run to the other side of the room, and then I'll run back, and we'll launch right into it. Hello and welcome to episode twenty of the Split Screen Podcast, the podcast about podcasts, shows about shows, jokes within jokes. Always, always in jokes. Always in jokes. As is true tradition, there. Whenever I get to introduce the podcast, I tend to forget to actually introduce ourselves. My name is Craig Wilson, uh, designer and five out of ten. And I'm joined by the editor-in-chief and founder of 5 Out of 10 and Split Screen and all sorts of other fun stuff, Alan Williamson. Hello! We can't do our, we can't do our barbershop intro anymore. Um, on the last episode, we had Rick Lane on. And then, uh, true to form, I was on Wikipedia to see if two notes constituted a chord or not. No. Nope. And- <laughs> <laughs> that's an interval, Alan. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what Wikipedia said. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that was quite a, I thought that was quite a, a poetic and a nice way of looking at our relationship with Rick, our friendship. He's the third note that forms our chord of life. <laughs> he's, he's our major and minor third. Okay. Okay. You've gone, you've gone full musical on me, which is okay because, uh, yeah, this is a, a podcast about podcasts. And, um, I mean, we've been kind of talking for a while about what our favorite podcasts are, like not on the podcast, just in person. Um, and we do kind of fling ideas back and forth at each other. And typically what happens is either you'll recommend one to me or I'll recommend one to you. And then we will forget that recommendation and go, oh, I just found this brilliant podcast. <laughs> you simply have to listen to it. It's like, yeah, I, I told you about that. Yeah. So I did, I did that this morning with Invisibilia, uh, one of the new ones from NPR. And I was like, Yo, Alan would really enjoy this. I'm sure it's something he would like and possibly recommend. And it turns um, out that happened about a couple of weeks ago. I'm pretty sure I did it with uh, 99% Invisible as well, where I yeah. said, to you, oh, this is a fantastic design podcast you're absolutely going to love, especially whenever you recommended it to me. That was how I should have known you would love it. Um, but like, I, was, I was kind of thinking about, um, so whenever we started our podcast, which uh, was many, many years ago now, it was quite scary, um, I didn't actually listen to a lot of podcasts. And for the first 13, 14 episodes, I, I never really listened to any at all. And it's like, if somebody says to me, what is the best way to be better at writing? I always say, read. Never read anything. Yeah, I always say, never read anything. God, I hate reading. Just write stuff and, and just get your words out there. But okay, so seriously, I always say, you know, read as much as you can and also write a lot. Um, and we recorded a podcast, but I did not listen to any. And it's only in the past couple of months um, whenever I got into using um, Overcast, which is my kind of podcatcher of choice, which is by um, Marco Arment, that I um, only actually started listening to podcasts again, and I, I can't get enough of them. And I listen to them every single day when I cycle to work. Sometimes I listen to them in work or when I'm walking about town. Um, and and, and uh, yeah, I've, it's, it's totally changed my opinion of podcasts. So I think it's good that we're doing this now, partly because if we'd done it two years ago, um, it would have just been you recommending podcasts and me going, "Yep, that sounds like a good one." Yeah, well, it's been it's been kind of four years, um, and it's taken us four years to get to episode number twenty, um, which probably talks a little bit about how we approached it back in the day. Um, but no, I I've been listening to podcasts really since like two thousand seven, two thousand eight, um, and that started a lot with the One Up Network podcast, really. And it was a lot of old video game podcasts like Retronauts and, and GFW Radio. But I now, like, I, I don't use Overcast. I just use the standard podcast app made by Apple Incorporated. You need and, to get into Overcast, man. And, well, yeah, but it does everything I want, which is download a podcast and play it. So there's not much more I'm looking for. This but, does things that you don't know you want yet until you've tried them. Like... Um, like it automatically cuts the gaps between people talking so that you can listen to more podcasts in the same length of time without I, speeding the audio up. I, painsta do... I painstakingly edit in those gaps between us talking. Like that little one there where it almost sounded like I was burping. That's like on purpose that I put that kind of stuff in. I don't want an app taking away my artistic intent. So you're saying that um, sometimes you could cut in a longer gap to make it sound like we had an awkward silence? I mean, you might not have to. There might just be a natural awkward silence, but that, that, that's a thing you could do, I guess. 
Um, <laughs> but also, um, yes, it, it lets you do smart playlists as well. Um, you can so you can build playlists for various podcast networks or specific ones you always want to listen to. So that like all your episodes of so all my episodes of Welcome to Night Vale and things aren't in the new podcast list because I haven't I don't want to listen to them until I get a chance to sit down and commit to them. Yeah, just try it. Just try it. It's free for God's sake. And if you <laughs> like it, then you can well you can try the the smart speed and the voice boost stuff, which is really good if you're like out for a walk or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, those are premium features. Um, so you can try them out for like say ten minutes, I think, and then unlock them. But you should give it a go. You know, open open your mind. Um, don't, limit, um, don't limit yourself to Apple's podcast app. With did it not just have like a spinning a spinning tape deck? Uh, it did, yeah. It's uh, you know because that's how the podcasts, like first podcast by Ricky Gervais, were done. They were done onto tape and then transmitted through the air into a that's, computer. That's like the ultimate. That's the ultimate like um, skeuomorphism gone wrong. Scott Forstall type thing at Apple, like having a having a reel to reel with a podcast on it, a medium that has only ever been digital. So one one of the very, very first podcasts I ever found was it was a Team Fortress 2 podcast. And this was like just after the game had been released. And so each episode talked about a different class in the game. Uh-huh. What well, I, I was at university at the time. I didn't have uh, an iPhone yet. And so I had a little, like one of those little, I would call it like an inline MP3 player. So it's just like a little stubby USB stick. And it had bugger all in the way of memory. So what I would do is I would download the episode of this podcast. It would be too big to fit onto that drive. So I would have to downsample it from like 44.1 kilohertz to like less than 11 kilohertz, which sounds like this. I'm going to do this on this sentence. It sounds terrible. And then to compress it from stereo to mono and then transfer it over. And then I would take that in my pocket and I would listen to that in the library while I was studying. And mm-hmm. so it was a very like labor intensive. So it might as well have been on magnetic tape um, for the way I was going about doing it. It may, it may as well have been like the first recording onto a wax cylinder. <laughs> yeah. Whereas now it's, it's quite nice just having something that syncs to my phone. And it's normally when I'm driving and then once I'm in my flat, because I live alone, a lonely life alone, I, yeah, you don't live a lonely life. That's not true. You live a lonely life. We're recording this in the afternoon because your girlfriend's coming around. That's not. That's that's the opposite of a lonely life. I'm going to spend the rest of my evening playing a game where you romance pigeons. That's fucking lonely, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's your number one pigeon prospect right now? Um, well, last night I am I'm playing. I'm playing Harrowful Boyfriend, and last night I, I romanced uh, Ryuta, who's your kind of bog standard uh, rock dove. Pigeon, right? But okay. There's, there's there's a couple of other ones of varying personalities and uh, breeds. I'm gonna try and work my way into. Well, once once I whenever I'm I'm, <laughs> oh, it's all right, Alan. You'll meet the real pigeon soon enough. A birds pigeon, who, a pigeon who respects you for you. Birds of a feather and all that. Eh? Um. um lol. <laughs> yeah. So so that so what was your first podcast then that you ever got into? I don't know. It was probably I, I, ours, I guess. It was probably, probably this one. Which is like, it probably was, like, was, I think. Which meant the only way you could go was up, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, start at the bottom and work my up. I don't know, because um, I, I used to subscribe to quite a lot of them, and I think that part of the problem was that whenever people recommend podcasts to me, I kind of think I've got a very specific list of things that I want to listen to, and the thing that I really don't like is the... And this is not... So this is going to sound slightly racist, but I promise it's not. It's your generic five American guys in a room, and I can't tell the voices apart, and I can't tell the personalities apart. Yeah. And it's kind of what games did you play this week? And some people like those, um, but you know that 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 kind of style of podcast isn't for me. And I think it's taken me months of exploration and discovery to think that the kind of podcasts I actually enjoy, which is good because it's essentially what ours is modelled on, is that kind of. Um, two friends in a room kind of thing where you've got two people with a really strong rapport just just shooting the shit um and you know the conversations they have are interesting but also they have a kind of structure to it so i like that you know we always kind of pick a topic and then talk around it the worst is the ones where i just go right craig uh, how's it going what have um what have you been playing you go well, i've been i've been playing this and could because and that's annoying because sometimes it takes me weeks to get to new podcasts and so i just don't care about what new games are out by that point but I don't know what my first was, but um, uh, I should stop talking and typing at the same time. Hold on. 
I like the podcast where you hear people typing them. Do you? Yeah. Well, lucky for you, this is this is one of them. Um, I don't know. I don't know which ones I ever started listening to, and I don't even know if the ones I listen to now are the same ones I listened to when I first tried to get into podcasts, but I suspect not. And I think the problem was that um, I was looking for technical solutions to a artistic problem. Mm -hmm. So I would get like Instacast on my iPhone and then I had it on my iPad and I had it on my Mac and I thought, oh great, now I can listen to podcasts on my Mac and things. But actually the shows I had, I didn't want to listen to. So therefore I didn't. And now it's more about like, I, I like Overcast as an app, but I think the other thing is that it actually has proper podcast curation. So it recommends ones that you think you like. Um, and it also um, lets you recommend ones, and that's kind of it. Looks to see who your Twitter friends are and Overcast and what they've recommended, um, and that kind of peer recommendation is a much better way of doing it than just, oh, you know, here's all these ten thousand gaming podcasts you probably won't like. So what we're going to do now is go through a list of about ten thousand podcasts that we like. Yep, yep, that's the plan. And um, I'm trying to think how we can do this. I think we can either just we'll certainly have on the post on the site just a link to all of them. But it'd be quite good if we could maybe pick an episode and just we'll just try put a playlist together of sorts. Oh yeah, um, I think I think that's totally doable because I've been trying to I've been trying to deliberately um, fave and and share the ones I've liked from some of my choices. Um, and I probably should have done more homework and so I could have talked more about those individual episodes. But I've definitely got some picks for pretty much all of them. So the first kind of podcast I got into after this Team Fortress Two one, I was like, oh, this is like a, this is a thing. Was the Gamers with Jobs podcast and it's um the james of god bleh, the jamer oh my god bleh, jamers bleh, bleh. with gods it's the jamers with god podcast um which is kind of a weekly round table and although they they do start off with the so what you've been playing the fact that they play an ungodly amount of games means that it's very topical that's probably where i get my my news on like what's just been released and sort of things that are coming up because they will they're involved in quite a lot of betas and stuff like that so one of them is like absolutely mad on the Oculus Rift. And mm -hmm. so I find out a bit more about that. But then they then have a break and then they go into a topic session. And that was kind of the format that I liked that I thought we would use, which was just actually skip the chat at the beginning and just get straight into like a topic. So who's actually on the Gamers with Jobs podcast? So it kind of has a, a rotating lineup, but the core members are Sean Sands, Sean Andrich, Julian Murdoch, and... Corey Banks, I think. And who else has been on there? Uh, Rob Zachney. Oh, okay. He's the only one I've heard of. Yeah, that was me, that was me trying to like figure out on a list of people. Julian Murdoch's written um, around the place, but I think the other guys, they founded it. It's a, Really, it's around a community. Um, it, it's for people who don't have all the time in the world to play games. Yeah. And so it's their forums are very active, and it's where people will go and they'll set up and arrange pub sessions uh, to to for certain games, and then they know they can get a certain type of people who maybe aren't going to go in and completely dominate them. Yeah. And you got certain like minded folk who like to think about games and talk about them. Actually, now if you go to the Dropbox, Alan, that file that I've shared with you, it's the January fourteenth episode from two thousand nine. Do you want me to listen to this now? Open yeah, open up and scroll along to one hour fifteen minutes and twenty uh, okay. seconds Our into next it. Next audio. Uh, this is actually an, an audio email, and this one's from Craig Wilson. Greetings, gentlemen. I was planning on writing a letter and sending it to all those who have inspired me to begin writing and thinking critically about games, seeking their advice. Uh, the recent shakeup at One Up highlights one of my concerns, uh, which I'd like to ask you now. What do you awful. believe to be the current climate in the field of that professional games good. journalism? I know. Would you recommend it to a youngster like myself, or oh. should I be dissuaded oh. by the decline of the printed word in oh. favour of the digital text? Oh. Finally, thank you, Sean, Sean, oh. Rob, Julian, oh. Corey, and Michael, for your inspiration. I'm in my penultimate year of a physics master's, which is tolerated by my gear, high position as tech editor of the University of Edinburgh Bible newspaper. Reading? I think I'm 23 at this point. You all part to play in that, so I'd like to thank you now. Cheers. Yeah, like tech editor guy. for the newspaper in Edinburgh is pretty awesome. Um, in the that is really editor. cool. Yeah, am yeah. I the only it one? Way better than like random freelancer. Am I? I, the... I can tell you right now, Rob, you're not the only one. But go ahead and say it. Am I the only one who <laughs> thinks that guy sounds like he's forty? <laughs> it's like I don't know what yes. it is. It's the accent. It just makes him seem <laughs> much like older. And 
this is more just, attractive. And this is just something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the ladies would be falling all over this guy. I, I have no doubt. I, I was actually going to say that I, I'm grateful that Mary from Lord Lord of the Rings uh, sent us a because uh, <laughs> because I haven't heard from him since they got back from Mordor, and I was wondering what he was doing. And so well, he's going to say, it, 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 I don't know, just something about that accent makes everything seem so eloquent uh, i had a living? similar situation up in banff where another scotsman a true scotsman was up there saying a speech and i was just like blown hey, away by like, like <laughs> i was blown away hey, by the you speech know, i was really worried we weren't gonna Man fixate on the crush. accent uh and, and <laughs> here we are all right but he has a good question he does have a very good question he and, does. and, 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 and question just stop Phil, it there who, the whole point right that was i did, I did game, no i did I, what i what i loved was uh, first of all that um they said you sounded like a 40 year old man and, and, and Mary from Lord of the Rings. But I also liked when they're like, that guy's voice is going to make him really popular with the ladies. And it's like, hmm. No, that, 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 that did not happen. I'm kind of lucky in that a couple of years ago. I mean, that didn't happen. But I certainly, I've never, I, 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 I've never spoken like that. It was a weird inflection. It was like so embarrassing and rehearsed. And, uh, anyway. I think to the um, podcast I sent you the other day, which was... Um, um, Every website that's the out thing. there. I, mean, I think it's called you know, That's the there's Thing. Layoffs happening uh, with, uh, yeah. but it's also, um, Alec Baldwin all, yeah, with Ira Glass. Not yet. Well, here's well. the thing. It's called Here's the Thing. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's really called Here's the Thing and, with Alec Baldwin you know, and Ira Glass. Uh, um, and the reason you need to listen to it is because um, Ira pulls the tape out of the collection of one of his very first recordings. And I don't think you will feel quite so bad after you hear that. Because it's a very similar thing to you. And he's doing a very much Hello, everyone. I'm speaking on the radio. And it's it's very much the same thing where I think you are also trying to put on trying to put on your best radio voice yes. for all of the audience. And you have to include lots of different inflections because otherwise, why would people listen? There's, and, also, there's also an element of this. This works f fine when it's written down. But when... I was then reading it out, and I just started saying like Sean, 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 and Rob. It's like oh, oh, ah, Sean, 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 and Rob. <laughs> but uh, that's it's, yeah, it's kind of strange, sing-songy voice in it. I don't even. It doesn't even sound like you're reading it off a sheet. It just sounds. It just sounds weird, man. It is. It's, it's just. Weird. It's just. It's just a weird little thing. Um, you can look back on that and feel proud that you don't speak like that anymore. Kind of. I mean, I, I definitely do. I, I do speak different in a podcast, but I, I deliberately do that i deliberately slow down um because if i don't it just turns into mush <laughs> mm -hmm. and but it's just it's one of these things where um i have to subconsciously slow myself down because whenever i talk i get excited and when i get excited i want to get all of the ideas out of my head as quickly as possible and i speak much much faster and it becomes very difficult especially whenever i listen back to the video brains transcripts mm -hmm. um you know a combination of not fantastic sound quality plus me going somewhere between half and full Irish makes it really difficult for people to, to pick it up on YouTube, which is okay because YouTube does subtitles, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but podcasts, podcasts have no subtitles, buddy. So that, if we, do you want to just, we'll group all the sort of video game ones together. Okay. Um, um, yeah, yeah. So the as I mentioned, the sort of first ones I really then got into was on the One Up Network, mm -hmm. and they were quite prolific in their podcasts. But the two that really uh, I latched onto one was called Retronauts. That's the one Jen Frank was on. Jen Frank was on that. It was Jeremy Parrish, Ray Barnhold, uh, Chris Kohler, Scott Sharkey, wow. and um, they would pick. A, a video game series or a sort of a topic like one was emulation or one was localization where they had a guy from atlas who trans uh, located uh, done the localization for like one of the persona games okay and so they would then just go into that topic in kind of various length i think the first one i got into was there was a metal gear episode um and it's just quite good because they just all chart through the history and they're all quite learned on the subject and it's they're, quite all quite funny, big, so. they're all quite big names as well, because Jeremy Parrish now does US Gamer. Chris Kohler now does Wired. Um, Ray Reels, Barnhold was doing Barnhold, Scroll. Uh, yeah, he, did, he did Scroll. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> good night, Sweet Prince. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, those, those are all like... It, it sounds like one of these things that... I don't know if... Like, I guess 1UP was always kind of big, but uh, some of those things can be big you know, launching vehicles for other people. Uh, the yeah. other one that um, Joystick closed this week... Yes, um, which is like 
well, actually, at the time of recording, it, it's still running. It closes on Tuesday. But whenever you hear about you know that joystick launched sites like Polygon and things like that, it was a it was a big deal, and it was certainly the first games website that I got into. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Maybe one day people will be talking about the split screen podcast and saying, "Oh yeah, what happened to those guys? Oh nothing, nothing. They just uh, were so sporadic." <laughs> They're still technically recording. The last recording was four years ago. The other one on the One Up Network was GFW Radio, and so this yep. was when this was all. Uh, yes, yeah, so like the One Up Network was part of the Ziff Davis uh, mm-hmm. company, publishing company, and they did uh, magazines like EGM and official PlayStation Magazine, and then they did uh, they had Computer Gaming World, which then um, they did a branding thing with Microsoft became Games for Windows Magazine. Now, games remember, for, ga- remember Games for Windows? <laughs> yeah. Now, Games for Windows doesn't sound like it should be an interesting topic, but the, this is uh, this is my favourite podcast of all time. Yeah, you you, you I, go back and re-listen to it, don't I've, you? I've probably listened to... It ran from like 2007 to 2000... Uh, 2006 to 2008. I've probably listened to like the back catalogue through and through at least five times now. And there's kind of something sad about that. Like, I'll Yes, there, that. there kind of is. There kind of is. And there's an element of like OCD. Like the other day, I kind of just threw around because I was I was in preparation for this podcast. I found um, a, a a different podcast that recaps other podcasts. It's called This Year, and it has got for like games for Windows. Like you're not going to go and listen to like this two year um, anthology, but they've collapsed each year into like a three or four hour compilation, which is actually probably the best way I'd say to get into it rather than go and source it source it out episode by episode. Um, they, this year, actually, that's a good one. They also do for Planet Money, uh, This American Life, and things like that. So they've got that's a pretty good catch all if you want to give those any episodes in that list to try, and then you might go off and then investigate them more. But on Jibdo Radio, it had like Jeff Green, Sean uh, Elliott, Ryan Scott, and Sean uh, Malloy. But that, that, that podcast had that great mix of. Because they were actually making a magazine, the ma- the podcast was very freeform, and it was them venting often quite vocally about the state of like games journalism. So it was like a cool insider look into what it was like to make a magazine. All that I was listening to that while we started, like the shoot newspapers, always had that in the back of my head, and that probably developed a cr- critical eye more than anything else at the time. Okay, um, and I always, I always like to think it was um, you, me, yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was in terms of writing and editing, but. One of the offshoots from that, they had a, their freelancer Robert Ashley became a kind of regular member. He oh, did his, well he did his own spin off podcast called A Life Well West, Wasted. I can't speak today. This is really life, great. A life well wasted. Great, it's all uh, about American supremacy. <laughs> a life well wasted is probably like it's got one foot in the video game camp and one foot in like the NPR camp because it's edited in a, a way very much like Radio Lab. Um, where the guy Robert Ashley's in a band, so there's lots of musical elements. So there's like one part I'll cut in where he went to a uh, pinball museum, and then all of a sudden, like the sounds of the pinball machines, he starts using them and builds a song out of it. Mm-hmm. And it just it's just really cool and very trippy. But the only ran for about um, six or seven episodes in the end, but they're yeah, timeless, there's not, there's absolutely not timeless. Either. You can go back and um, re-listen to those like a really recommend that the i think it i think it is the latest one is one we speaks to john romero um and it's it's very good it's a good starting <laughs> um because sometimes i i find the there are big long musical interludes in that and it doesn't it, you know just kind of either like that or you don't <laughs> but the romero one wasn't quite as full on as some of the other episodes um so we might want to recommend that one hint, hint. the kind of podcasts i like and and this is the reason why we originally did split screen the way we did was I like ones that, that do have a kind of timelessness to them. And that's like, you know, that's the way I approach all of my writing as well. Apart from that time, I did a, a weekly op ed for, for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the ones I appeared on recently, um, and I'm also mentioning it because it's good, um, is Johnny Collins, my favorite game podcast. So the premise, as you might have guessed, is that uh, Johnny got um, various guests on in there pretty much all games journalists um, on to talk about their favourite game. Um, and so he asked me, because um, we've been friends for a while, and I chose um, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Mm-hmm. So if you don't listen to that episode, um, which I recommend you do, and honestly, like, um, it is my favourite episode from the season, just because it got me to appreciate a classic game that I hadn't really thought about. That's what I really liked about that experience. 
Um, but I, I go into that in the podcast. But the other one that's very good is um, Alex Donaldson on Final Fantasy IX. Um, and uh, it's really good to... Like a lot of the times when we talk about games, we just kind of wing it a bit, right? So yeah. we did our last podcast about save rooms and we just kind of talk a bit. We do a little bit of research, but we're not like masters of that particular domain. But whenever you hear like Alex talking about Final Fantasy, um, he knows everything about that game and he, under- he kn- knows the everything from the political climate when the game was made to why it runs at the speed it does and why certain design decisions were made. Um, and I just think that's really fascinating for somebody to take a, a deep dive into that game. Yeah, so that, like, that's what I really, really enjoyed about that one. Yeah, although it's not a, a podcast, I really recommend checking out Double Fine's YouTube channel. And they've been doing a number of dev Let's Play. So they did one as well where they sat down with John Romero and played through all, most of Doom. And you get that amazing insight. They had one, though, which is absolutely brilliant, where it was the creative director for the Lion King and Aladdin games. Like on the SNES. Yeah, Perry? Might be. Oh, oh, the SNES ones? I don't know. Uh, like the Super old Nintendo. ones. Super Nintendo ones were made by Capcom, or at least Super Nintendo Aladdin was made by Capcom, and um, I think Virgin. Mega Drive was made by Virgin, who was Dave Perry, who is now, yeah, he did, so he did, I, I just know this because he's like one of my favorite game designers, and he's also Northern Irish, so he's somewhat of a personal hero, but uh, so he made Aladdin, um, and then he went on to make Earthworm Jim, um, and then after that, um, he did Shiny Entertainment, and did like MDK, um, and then he did uh, uh, Gaikai, right. and so he now works for Sony. So Gaikai is the streaming technology behind PlayStation Now, or whatever it's called. Um, but yes, I don't know if it was him going through it. If it was, it's probably the Mega Drive version. Um, if it wasn't, it might have been a Capcom guy. But I think Shinji Mikami. It, 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 I it wasn't. Did, um, it wasn't. Lab. It wasn't him because he wasn't Irish, and it's not. I'm pretty sure it's Virgin, not Capcom. But uh, he, he has an American accent now. He, he he's, he's lost his. Oh, it might be, it might be then, but either way, that that kind of insight behind the game, I don't have. I've not come across a podcast where they really go about doing that. I don't know if, uh, but then again, I've not listened to Unlimited Hyperbole by it's Unlimited Hyperbole. Hyperbole, yeah. Well, I've not listened to it, so <laughs> <laughs> that just proves my point. Joe bought somebody a drink the other night because they pronounced hyperbole correctly when they were speaking to him. Ah, so good show. You've just just blown it. Just. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> no free drink for you. Um, Unlimited Hi- Hyperbole is really, really good. Um, and that is pretty much what it's about. Um, the, some of the ones that are very good are, um, there's one about, by Brian Moriarty, who did um, Loom and some of those old LucasArts adventure games. Right. So I would probably I'd throw my hat into the ring for that one. He also did stuff where people talked about their, their favorite games, but in a slightly different way. I mean, he's a very good one with David Brown, who was the ex-editor at PC Zone. So it's a kind of good um, games journalism inside baseball one. Um, but yeah, it, it's really good. And again, it's um, another one of these timeless series where he stopped recording it now. He's only, he's only done two or three seasons and now he's stopped. Um, and they're not that long. So I would, if I, if I were you, um, I would go back and listen to all of them. Cool. And so we're going to have links to all these on the I'll try to build links into the uh, description so that you can just pop up and get straight into them. We can we can do this. We got this, buddy. We got this. The other other uh, other video game podcast. I quite like Polygon's quality control just as a review show because uh, they're quite yeah. they're quite short. I mean, ten minutes, twenty minute episodes, mm-hmm. and it'll just be whenever they put up a review and they just kind of talk. One of the editors talks through the review of the the writer, basically. Um. Obviously, hands down, the greatest video game podcast of all time is the BitSocket one. But I fawn over that all the time on Twitter anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think, yeah, well, I, I had BitSocket on my list of favorite ones. And what I like about that is it's not really about video games. It's just so much. It's more like two comedians trying to see who can make each other laugh the hardest. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I just love the rapport between uh, Scott and fucking Joe. And um, and I love that um, I love that they they don't know the features the other person has come up with. Um, there's a particularly good one um, where they do the choose your own adventure games. Um, I don't know if you've heard the latest one where they do um, is a choose your own Sonic adventure. Uh, <laughs> you have to like try and reverse the the fortunes of Sega. And there's another one called um, Kamiya Senpai, please notice me, um, where they you have to try and tweet your way into the good graces of um, Hideki Kamiya. 
Um, which, oh, it's just so funny. It's and just, it, it's just... And the music and the music rounds are brilliant. And is it canon? Has it kind of become legendary now? Yeah, the segments are just so imaginative and yeah. and just so very, very, very funny. <laughs> well, the, other oh, good thing, think, the other thing I really enjoy genuinely, is... Uh, genuinely almost crashed my car when they were doing the... Uh, is it canon? I think the the Sonic one, and they got to Porker Lewis, Porker Lewis. <laughs> and I was like crying, and I'm like driving down the motorway, being like, "Oh God, when can I?" Like, have you have you listened to the latest one, which is called uh, Jimmy Shand and his video game band? Yes, because <laughs> the, there's, the there's the a Kaylee bit music. In, oh, the, the bit with the Kaylee music. I was out for a run <laughs> listening to this, and I just couldn't breathe and had to stop running because I thought it was going to collapse <laughs> at the uh, the Snake Eater one. Okay, so this is the third one. You get this one. It's a bit of a classic. Did this. Bit of a crowd pleaser this when he did. What a thrill, the darkness and silence through the night. What a thrill, I'm searching and I'm ill to do you. What a fear in my heart, but just so supreme. I give my okay, life not life. for honour, but for you stick eater. In my time, there'll be nobody else. Time is the way I fly to you. Sneaky, maybe oh, so. it's fine though. Yeah. If you're right. Sneaky, oh. <laughs> I just, I, I, I couldn't take it. It's, oh. yeah. I know what I really liked was it actually got to the top of the iTunes charts for for games related podcasts, mm. which is good. But yeah, two extremely nice guys um, doing an extremely funny podcast. Um, yeah, what's more to say? Just stop now and go listen to it. It's over. It's over. It's done. Well, it's nice talking to you, Craig. Yeah, but yeah, but I mean, I don't listen to that many games podcasts. All I really, honestly, the only one I really listen to is BitSocket, and I've listened to um, Hyperbole, Life Well Wasted, Favorite Game. That's pretty much it. Like, I, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not big on games current affairs. Um, so yeah, yeah, like I say, with the exception of of gamers with jobs, which I've only just, you know, in the past couple of weeks gone back into. It's one of those shows where. I think when a show is so frequent, or or, or, just, or just when they, they're very topical, I'll kind of get into it for a while, and then I'll drift away, mm-hmm. and then I'll come back to it after a point, and I'm not interested in trying to catch up on the backlog, because there's nothing really yeah. to catch up on. So I, it's only right now, it's, it's BitSocket, Games of Jobs, and I think Polygon actually just fell off the list, but again, it's a similar thing, I'm just... Oof. Um, well, you know, I've got a very small iPhone, <laughs> I've only got a 5 gig one, so I can, can't fit much stuff on there. It's the smallest model. Yep. Cheap as chips. So, what other things do we like? Um, so, we're big in, well, see, you like the kind of design ones and the human interest stories, and I like a bit of those as well, but I also like a couple of tech ones. Um, not that many, though. But we both are big, we're both we're big serial fans. Yeah. Yeah, serial. And just that whole This American Life genre <laughs> for me, where they're kind of narrative journalism mixed with just just very creative, just very inventive stories. Yeah, just and good, just very good, interesting good, good stories. human interest stories. And even yeah. it's called This American Life, actually, um, most of them aren't really that much to do with America in particular. They are yeah. very much, they're, they're, uni- they're not universal truth, but they are universal stories you can appreciate. Um, have you got any favorites from the past few episodes? Because I know uh, of a couple that I really enjoyed. Um, and just in terms of favorite episodes of This American Life, Act 5. Um, always comes to mind and it's set in a maximum security prison somewhere in in the south of, well somewhere in the this, this southern states in america and it is a group of inmates performing hamlet and uh so it's it's a play about murder being performed by people who have been convicted for murder mm-hmm. and you just get these interesting characters where they're likable like some of them just are they're just outright likable um and then it's like that flip of well how do you reconcile that against what they've done and that's what the 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 journalist or reporter goes through um there's one about um it's basically a guy who fuck i can't remember it save me alan I, I I can't how can I possibly save you? Okay, I'll, I'll I'll tell you a couple of mine. So the one that I think was was one of the biggest scandals in this American life history was the Mike Daisy one. Ah yeah. So, so Mike Daisy is a uh, monologist, 
um, um, who, so the episode was called uh, Mr. Daisy and the Apple Factory, um, and he wrote this monologue called um, The Agony and Ecstasy of Steve Jobs. So he went along to the Apple Factory in China and he talked about like kids building iPhones in, in terrible circumstances. Um, and then what happened was, and, and again, on the, the, the here's the thing, Ira Glass, Alec Baldwin, they talk a bit more about this. Um, it basically emerged that Daisy had made up a lot of those facts. Um, and that episode in itself is interesting, but what's really interesting is the follow-up apology podcast mm -hmm. uh, because it has an interview between Ira Glass and Mike Daisy. So I talked before about Overcast's smart speed functionality, which contracts the pauses in podcasts. Um, turn that off if you're listening to that because everything is in the silence. Um, the, the questions that Ira asks and Daisy just says nothing for whole minutes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just that, that's the, it's the agony, agony and no ecstasy of Mike Daisy. It is like it, it's, it's, it's really like amazingly compelling stuff. Yeah, I've, put, I've, I've, I've just opened up the This American Life app, uh, which is actually a really good way of just sorting through the show. And yeah, got, you can't get theirs in your podcatcher after a week or two. Yeah. Um, so if you want to dip into the archives, yeah, you have to use the official app, really. And they're publicly funded, so if you're going to support them in some way, actually getting the app is, is the most selfish way of, of, of certainly doing that while also giving them some money. But they've got um, their own staff picks and shortlists there. Um, there's one called 129 Cars, and it takes place just on a, a car dealer lot where all of these guys have to sell a certain number of cars. Again, it sounds like it's just incredibly compelling once you get into it and you then start learning about the different characters. And so mm -hmm. there's like the old guy who seems to just keep everything to himself. There's like the young upstart who's who's kind of cocky and mouthy, but he can back it up. Um, what other great ones have there been? In, um, uh, inside Job, that's the one I was struggling to think about. Um it's one about the Federal Reserve. Uh, I don't know if it's Federal Reserve. Okay, there's a very good one about somebody who investigates the Federal Reserve. Um, um, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of them, but I think her first name is Carmen. Um, but it was a, quite a recent one, and um, it was very good. Um, so if you remind me, I will put a link into that one. It was very good. Yeah, we'll just throw a bunch of links on this one. My, my mind's blanking right now, but that <laughs> that is <laughs> probably one of the best podcasts ever um, and, oh, and if you be. want if you want a final one um every year they do a um a poetry turkey day <laughs> they, they do they do a poetry slam every year but they did a turkey day one um and this year um they, they did a story about this killer turkey called tom and it was just so funny it was, uh, it was kind of yeah just funny and, and unbelievable and very much a true story about this uh this wild turkey that befriended a family but everybody else hated him it was very good and then this guy trying to make um humane foie gras that's a good episode it doesn't sound it doesn't sound good but trust we're, me it's good yeah we're pitching the greatest show in the worst way but there you go uh, well i mean it's one of these things where i think everybody everybody listening to this knows that the only way to appreciate these shows is to get them for yourselves so quite similar to this american life is radio lab where i would say this american life is more human interest stories radio lab is is very much just general science and yeah, Radio Lab's one of those ones that like it, it is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, podcasts out there. But I've mm -hmm. actually never listened to that one. So some of the episodes which are amazing, uh, Words is a great one, um, where they talk to someone who uh, lost the ability, lost, got a, had a stroke and lost the speech part of their brain essentially, and then had to like get it back. Oh. And so they talk about what it was like to be alive and not be able to communicate. Um, numbers is a good one, just on the concept of numbers. They're all got very, again, very much a theme, and then they explore that theme, but uh, in ways that are just very, very enlightening. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, I learn a lot from that podcast. It's the same. It's the same with this American Life. You do like I, I like things where you get to to learn a lot. Very enriching. That's that's why I like to put them on when I go for a run now. Partly because if you listen to an hour long show, most of the runs done, and you know the time kind of flies because you're paying attention to the podcast. Yeah, um, but also yeah, it's, it's good to it's good to learn things. A bit of bit of mind enrichment's good. Um, one I just remembered that I actually haven't put in my list is one called Reply All by Jimlet. Okay, um, and, it, and it seems to become popular quite recently. Um, but it is very good. Um, and they were talking about um, so what's really, that? Sorry, um, it is a oh god, it's 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 kind of a it's another kind of npr esque kind of one, but Reply All is kind of about conversations and how people communicate to each other with technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were talking about um, 
It was just sort of these racists that were talking through an anonymous service called um, Yik Yak, which is like a, a kind of an anonymous, an even more anonymous version of Twitter. Uh-huh. Uh, so, and how people in the school were being kind of abused, and then you know, the way that turned out, and how the lecturers all stepped in to help. It was a really interesting episode. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it was very good. Um, what what else? What else do I have in my list? Um, I mean, yeah, we kind of glossed over serial, but the first season really is very good. I think it has its ups and downs. I think like um, kind of looking back at it now, you know, whenever you know the ending, it's kind of like it's kind of like lost in a way. That whenever you know the whenever you know the ending, or or perhaps the lack thereof, um, it, it becomes a little less enticing. But I still think it, it's really good. Um, I would still recommend that to anyone. Yeah, and it was a series of. I mean, what serial? was it was an offshoot from this american life so this american life the structures they'll pick a theme for a podcast and then bring a num- or an episode as radio show and then present a number of stories on that theme uh serial was the first time that you did be long form storytelling so it's over nine or ten episodes ten episodes and, ten episodes and it was uh basically reinvestigating a um uh, uh, uh what's the what's murder it? A murder. Yeah, a murder, ultimately, where a man was convicted for murdering his girlfriend and things just don't stack up on from either side. And so that's where there was this compelling nature where you felt like, well, are we getting to a conclusion? And it was just very expertly told where they'll present you one story and then like, okay, next week we go into like actually what was said in court. What's quite interesting is that after you've, after you've listened to some episodes of Serial, it's well worth going into the opinion pieces and the, the ways people have deconstructed serial, uh, not not so much the actual like the the, the murder trial and stuff. The way yeah. people have talked about you know this as a kind of ethical journalism, because the kind of problems you had after serial and during it um, were that um, one of the main players is this guy called Jay, who doesn't actually appear in the podcast because yep. he didn't want to talk to the presenters. And the people started trying to track him down and going to his house, and then he did an interview for another publication, mm-hmm. um, and. It's interesting in terms of the, you know journalistic ethics because this case is actually going up for appeal again. It's kind of like you know the British media reporting on allegations of you know court cases that are currently ongoing. And and, and while it's interesting and, and a compelling story, uh, you know you still have to remember this: these are people's lives, and, and especially like you know that that girl was murdered. It's not a, it's not a bit of fun storytelling. Like her family are you know still hurting, and it's dragging up things that happened over a decade ago. And so like as it's 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 interesting in terms of the story it tells, but it's also interesting in terms of the wider cultural implications. Yeah, and and that's why going when it was released week by week, um, I I very much felt that, um, and that's the kind of dialogue that I wanted to see more of, which is like I don't know if I should be enjoying this as much as yeah because yeah. It's, it's presented in an entertainment format fundamentally. It's, it is it, like it's, a murder it's, mystery. It's, it's a murder like a, mystery. It's like a whodunit kind of thing. And that's and, kind of the problem, isn't it? It's yeah. like, it's that repackaging of fact for entertainment. And that's, I mean, that's what a, this American life yeah. essentially does. But it's very much things that have already taken place. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of an after the fact thing, whereas this is kind of a, an ongoing case. And I think that's, that's the difference. Yeah, possibly. I mean, like, I've still not fully resolved it, um, like how I feel about it. Or oh, I just know that it was something I'd feel better for having listened to yeah <laughs> and yeah and gone through and that's, then i think that's fair completely different from that we kind of mentioned 99 percent invisible earlier it's a design i guess it's a design podcast yep. isn't it um it's a design podcast presented by roman mars um and it yeah it kind of looks like looks at all aspects of design but not in a not in a kind of graphic design way. It's like, you know, how are things made and, and how do things work? And they generally pick extremely interesting things. Like the last one I listened to was about um, these uh, moon towers in, yeah. uh, in tech. It was in uh, possibly Austin, Texas. Um, and it would be these massive, um, in the days before the incandescent light bulb, they had these enormous um, graphite um, lights. Uh, and so there were arc lights, which is like whenever you get to graphite electrodes um, and so an arc of electricity passes between the two of them and creates an extremely bright light. Right. Um, and the, so these things were on all the time, but you couldn't look at them directly, and people had to use umbrellas to shield themselves from the, the arc light, and you had bits of burning carbon <laughs> falling down from the streets. Um, but it goes, like, I'm trying to think about ones I enjoyed recently. There was, there was the amazing one, um, 10,000 Years. Oh, yes, yeah, and that's, um, a, that's a story I'd read elsewhere, but they, they went yeah. into it in just such a great angle. Um, and to give you a kind of brief overview without spoiling it is that um, 
it's looking at nuclear waste um, and how do you um, how do you through design um, tell people uh, about an area that is unsafe and unfit for you know human habitation or any kind of animal life um, because of the hazardous materials inside um, yeah. and it's, and it, it, but it's interesting because it goes at everything from it's kind of like the death of language and you're looking it's you're looking so far ahead that it would be very difficult to to create a warning that would make sense a hundred years from now never mind ten thousand yeah uh, and, and that's where it, it was something that was in the either 70s or 80s it was like a government mm. kind of little funded project to look at it and they pulled in um scholars linguists artists uh, uh like landscape designers to try and and, and get that how do you design a form of communication that will survive 10,000 years when written communication or written language as we know it has only re- really been around for about 5,000. And yeah, that, um, I mean, we've got, if you look at digital communications, um, those things break down incredibly quickly. There's files you can't open. There's files you could have created on a Mac a decade ago that you can't open on a Mac now yeah. because you can't run the program. They, the, the classic example is the, um, the BBC in the 80s did a, a Doomsday book. Yeah. Um, for those of us who or not in the UK, the Doomsday Book was written, I think, in like the 12, 1300s, a very long time ago, and it was basically one of the first recorded censuses. Um, so the BBC did a digital project, um, but they uh, they copied it onto these massive laser discs, um, these specialist players, and it, it played off a BBC microcomputer, um, and people are really struggling to read these discs now because the players are all breaking down. Yeah, um, And that's just digital information that was recorded you know, 20 or so years ago. That's why in light of this, people do a lot of things with open standards and things. So you can get like this, this proper archival grade PDF and things like that. Um, that you need to take into consideration, given that these formats might stop. Now, like Microsoft Works is another good one. Mm-hmm. People you know, will make Works documents on, on computers, and then you know how are you meant to open that now? Works doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So it's like other episodes they had, um, which I really enjoyed, was the sound of sport. And so it's just looking at. Oh, that's at, brilliant! It's brilliant that episode. Yeah. So it's just looking in at the sound design for um, broadcasting sports. So what you don't realize, they they have the example of um, like the rowing race, whatever the hell it's called, between Cambridge and Ox- Oxford. Oh, just yeah, I think it's just called the boat race. Yeah, the boat race, and how all the different miking techniques that they'll use, but then also how they edit it together to create drama, and then you just find out some things where you're like, oh my god, there's like such lies being told. That no one realizes. So a great, great one is on, um, is like the cross, like the long distance skiing. Yes. Where you've got this camera, which is very far away. And you've got this little person sort of skiing across this vista, but you can still hear the sounds of their skis poles going down and digging as they turn. And it, to make that would be incredibly difficult. You'd need hundreds of mics placed all, all along the track, and then you need some way of mixing between them. And it wouldn't sound as good as you think, anyway. And it wouldn't sound as good as you think. I mean, that's the thing. We both know that. Um, like, the better microphone you get, the worse you realize the world the world sounds. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank God for my blocked ears. Yeah, and your ears and then and, and, and your brain as it processes audio signals does so, so much work in terms of... Um, Oh my god! I'm just I can't speak today. Your brain and your ears do a lot of good work to make sound sound better. There we go. I was just saying a dumb way, um, <laughs> but yeah. So like on the skiing example, they actually sample ski sounds and then just sit on like a keyboard and just play it in in time to it, just like that. Is that the noise? Uh, what, what, what noise do skis make? I've never been skiing. Is that a kind of a? <laughs> uh, other great episodes they had were just looking at Disney animation. Okay. Um, they had one that looked at the iHeart NY graphic or logo and how um, they kind of explored like the copyright use of it where this one woman just makes little kind of stitched um, gifts which kind of use a variation on it and then she gets like a cease and desist meanwhile it can be parodied elsewhere and then they don't get anything so it kind of touches on that but yeah it's it's fantastic it's, it's, it's very good um, and the other one I've kind of put next to that in my list is Song Exploder, which is yeah. basically 99% invisible for songs. Um, so it is Rishikesh Sherway, the guy's called. Um, and every episode, they sit down with the recorders of a song and they go through how that song is constructed. So they've had people like um, Garbage, The National, uh, Ghostface Killer. Um, and they kind of, yeah, so they go into detail about one song. And actually, it's got me into a couple of bands. Um, an artist that I didn't really appreciate before that. 
Yeah. Um, and again, like 99PI, it's kind of aspects of, of design, in this case, sound design that we take for granted um, and then you deconstruct it and explain how these things were made, like uh, you know, where the lyrics come from. And I mean, I guess like with a lot of music, there is beauty in the unknown. And it's nice to not have songs explained, especially like lyrics that can be ambiguous and, you know, things that can mean a lot to people. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so they don't go into that much detail because often they're private moments of, a, of an artist's life. But uh, it's very, very good in terms of like, you know, why did they do what they did? How did they create initial riffs? And then how did they iterate and build that song? Um, so it's very good. Yeah, definitely. I think it rekindled uh, Postal Service. Um, period for me. <laughs> uh, um, they, they sort of picked apart one of their songs. Um, if you want a recommended episode, um, I would say the the one on the Watch Dogs soundtrack. They don't really do a lot of game music, but they've got one about Watch Dogs, which is a shit game um, with an interesting soundtrack. Um, so that's good. Mm. What else? What else, Alan? So uh, what? What else? What else? Okay, so I'll talk about what's probably my favorite podcast, um, which is called Back to Work. Right. Um, and back to work is Merlin Mann and Dan Benjamin. Uh, Dan Benjamin, he is the <clears throat> uh, Dan Benjamin is the producer at the Five by Five Network that does quite a lot of tech podcasts. Um, and Merlin Mann is a productivity guru who's most famous for Inbox Zero. Um, so he was the guy who came up with this idea of kind of you know dealing with your email properly. I and mean, he's also did stuff like the Hipster PDA, which is just uh, a a bull clip and a collection of cards. So. They do one every week and they generally focus on an aspect of productivity or creativity. Um, and they are just two very smart guys. Uh, they're also two friends. Um, there's, there's, like, there's a couple of in-jokes and things, but not too many. Mm -hmm. uh, the only in-joke they have is that they, they always seem to open the podcast by saying, good morning. <laughs> um, but it's quite interesting because they what they usually open each episode by chatting about their family life for about 15 20 minutes right um and for somebody who is not quite at that stage yet but conscious of the the relentless march of time i find that quite interesting um but then um yeah they, they go into a lot of detail about work productivity and a lot of it is merlin figuring things out for himself um so you know they get questions from listeners and then they uh kind of go through them in the podcast but merlin is very good at coming up with insightful things at short notice. Cool. Um, and certainly, like, I think it gives me a lot to think about in terms of my own productivity and how I structure things and, you know, what's a good use of your time and, you know, the things that really matter in life. Mm -hmm. um, and those are guys who are very productive, very creative people, um, but they also don't take, don't bite off more than they can chew. Um, they, I can't remember for the life of me what it was about, but the most recent one was very good. Certainly enough that I kind of started as a, as a really good one. Um, so I'll I'll give people a link to it. Um, with that, I would I don't know. I mean, you could it, it, they've done over two hundred episodes now, wow. um, okay. and I imagine most of them are very very good. But I would probably just download about three or four, work your way through them, and then and then carry on. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really good one. Um, and then there's another couple of tech podcasts that I like that um, are loosely related, but not quite. Um, so the one's very good is the talk show which is um, John Gruber, who's the Apple blogger behind Daring Fireball. Right. I mean, he has, like, he's had Merlin Man and people on the show before, but it's very much an Apple and tech-focused podcast. But the thing about Gruber is he's a guy that, again, thinks very deeply about things, and he likes a lot of things, like he really likes James Bond and Star Wars and uh, the qualities of a fine martini and things. <laughs> um, but if you're interested in, if you're interested in Apple-y stuff, it's very good. Um, the other one I really like is the Accidental Tech Podcast. And it is Marco Arment, the guy who made Overcast. Um, John Syracuse, who is the guy behind, um, he works for Ars Technica, and he does all of their OS X reviews. Um, the other one is Casey Liss, and he is kind of a, he's just kind of a straight man between the two characters of Syracuse and, uh, and Marco Arment. Um, and it's very, it's very interesting if you are interested in um, anything from kind of computer development and UI design to, you know, programming. Mm -hmm. And so Marco, there's a couple of episodes where he talks about Overcast and why he did what he did and the pitfalls he's had and, you know, the seals and things. Um, and he also, Marco's quite a prominent tech blogger. Um, and he wrote something recently about Apple's software standard slipping. Right. I mean, that's a really interesting discussion of what happens when uh, your post goes viral and goes out of control. Uh, and because Marco is also the guy who came up with apps like Instapaper um, and he also did Tumblr. He's one of the guys that coded Tumblr. Oh, cool. Um, so he's like, he's, he's a really, you know, he's an established tech guy. He's a very, very smart guy. 
Um, and yeah, the the stuff they think of between the three of them is always you know streets ahead of other people. And between, so I pretty much every week I'll always listen to the new talk show, the new back to work, and the new ATP, and that's a good three four hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of chip away at this American life and things when I go for a run. Um, but if you're if you're interested in nerdy stuff, I think they're good. I think like I think of a lot of these podcasts. I mean, either like them or you don't. Um, and there's nothing wrong with. Like, you know, you might like something like Polygon's Quality Control or Radio Lab, and I might, like, I've never listened to those, but I might just not enjoy those hosts mm-hmm. in the same way you might not enjoy Back to Work or the talk show. And I think, like, a lot of stuff about the podcasts you listen to, it's the same as the radio shows you listen to. It's just about, you know, there's, there's a lot of individuality here in your personal interests and probably the kind of people you would like going for a drink with in real life. Yeah, I find because it's, it's it's an audio experience, it's much more intimate than if it was just on video or, or writing. Like for me, yeah. like that's always the, the you know, because it's, it's their voice in my head. Um, it, it, so it's always much more like personal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that really matters then if you just don't like the style yeah, of someone's yeah. personality, then yeah, okay, that becomes a bit more of a barrier. So yeah, I, I do agree. You either like it or you don't. Um the the couple film podcasts I listen to every now and then one uh, I, I just like Mark Kermode's um, Radio Five Live show he does oh. with Simon Mayo because I really like his I really like some of the excerpts I've heard of that but I've never listened to the podcast outright but he's very good Kermode yeah that's good they, again they've just got good chemistry between the two of them and I like his reviews style which is very mm-hmm. short and to the point um, other good film ones are it used to be called Creative Screenwriting Magazine. Mm-hmm. And it was this guy, Jeff Goldsmith, would interview screenwriters um, uh, about their, 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 their transcripts. Normally it'd be in like a venue, so they would go and they'd watch the film, and then this would be the Q&A after it. Uh, his, that magazine he no longer does, and his new podcast is called The Q&A with Jeff Goldsmith. But some of the some fantastic episodes on there, like they had ones with George A. Romero, which turned oh. into like like kind of little history lessons of how he went about making like the first films, but then, you know, just actually going into all the symbology and the metaphors that he, 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 he pits into his films, but it's quite good. And then like the great one is on the King's speech. There's like, such, you can make a film about the effort that was gone, that was made into actually getting that. Ugh, my God, I cannot speak today, man. We picked a bad day to do a podcast. No, because I feel like I've been particularly clear. <laughs> <laughs> King's Speech. Um, it, the making of the King's Speech is like deserving of its own film. It actually ends up with like the Queen Mother giving approval, but then saying, "Not in my lifetime." Like the memories are too sore. Oh, shit. So the, you know that then put like another ten years on when it could actually be made. So as it's existed in, in in some form for like over twenty years. She didn't have to watch it though. To be fair. Um. Yeah, but you're not going to say that to the Queen, Mum. I mean, you're not going to say that now because she's dead, but even then. <laughs> say what you like to her now. Um, 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 uh, okay, hold hold that thought. I'm just going to get my phone because there's definitely one. Oh, oh, I already know what it is. It's called the Flop House. Okay. Um, I have not listened to the Flop House yet, but basically every week they... Uh, no, I've not listened to it yet. <laughs> we're just recommending stuff we've not listened to. Yeah, now. no, but that's because other people have recommended it to me and we're doing a public service. Cool. So the Flop House um, pick a different shitty movie every week. Um, and they, you know, dissect it. And I've heard if you start listening to the Flop House, you want to start with uh, Bullet to the Head with Sylvester Stallone. Okay. So I'll listen to that. You listen to that. Um, our listeners, Dave and Paul, will listen to that as well. Cool. Um, and we'll all see what we think. Awesome. And then uh, if, if nobody likes it, people can tweet at us and say, what a, what a shitty recommendation. You guys are irresponsible and fraudulent hmm. so just I um, just want to really quickly rattle through the other ones on my list uh, The Bugle is a very funny satirical podcast with uh, John Oliver and Andy Zoltzman it's brilliant just really good John Oliver is very good in general yeah just very very sharp um, humour there uh, I still like Spodcast um, which is Kevin Smith's podcast oh, you have to put on the you have to put on the walrus and the carpenter onto the list of yeah podcast episodes because that's the only it's the only episode of the smodcast i've listened to but i think it's probably the only one you need uh, yeah, like it's, it, uh, it's 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 something very special yeah where i gave the uh i wrote all about that in the screenies um under tusk you can you can just go check that out and you'll find out more about that show um very bad wizards is one that i've dabbled in it's not quite stuck but 
it's a psychologist and a um, philosopher uh, talking about different concepts. But they're they're basically two friends who take the piss out of each other. Mm. So there's an interesting dynamic where they're very academic. Like they are, I think, both um, professors. Uh, but they're just like trying to undermine each other and, and, and talk about this stuff. And so it's, it's a good mix again of like rapport, but then like an interesting topic. I can't think what that would be like. No, neither can I. Uh, I f- uh, welcome to Night Vale. That again is saving it up for a rainy day. Yeah. So it's a, it, it's it, it, of all of them, of all the podcasts, that's the one that gets me the most angry jealous. Because it's such a brilliant concept. I wish I thought of it before. Yeah. Because it's like a no budget idea that's just absolutely um, just so imaginative and so colorful. So it's a series, it, it's a fictional community radio show from this f- fictional town in the desert where it's just a mix of kind of sci fi, supernatural horror concepts. So so it's a bit, bit very X-Files-y. Twi- bit bit very X Files, very Twin Peaks, very Twilight Zone. Um, everything's just off. So they'll have like an announcement about the hooded figures in Grove Park. Do not address the figures in Grove Park. Um, but yeah, that's that's literally my list X stuff. I think I've worked through my entire list. Um, yeah, the only one is uh, NPR's Planet Money, which is very short and quite fun. Um, and it just tells you about various aspects of money. And I even, like, one of my housemates came in the other day and I was making dinner listening to Planet Money. I had to explain to them why I would listen to this because it sounds very boring, but it's mm-hmm. actually it's quite quite good. Because I, like, one of my one of my weak spots is kind of, I have no idea anything about how economics and finance works. Um, and when if you listen to that, it's encouraging because nobody knows how it works. And a lot of it is, like, you know, alchemy. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully you have enjoyed listening to this podcast um, and you won't enjoy our recommendations so much that you never listen to us again. Yeah, so if you check out the description, hopefully there'll be a whole bunch of links in there. If you've survived this long, congratulations. Well done. I barely made it, so... Yeah, you did, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your tongue's been tied for I the know. past. So I'm I've very been, tired. Like, I've, been, I've been liquid smoke this time. And you've been... Uh, <laughs> been uh, Crusty charcoal. Or crusty, crusty joke and um, liquid smoke. So yeah, we should probably do some kind of sign off. Yeah, we? same okay. thing. So okay, so you can find us at split screen.net. You can follow us on Twitter at split screen net, um, which is weird because we now have official Google Plus and YouTube URLs in there, split screen dot net rather than net. But that's okay. That's just the limitations. Um, <laughs> but what we um, what we'd really want you to check out is five out of ten magazine dot com. That'll be, be delightful. Yeah. At five out of ten mag on Twitter and soon to be on Twitch and a whole, whole host of other exciting things that'll be We've happening got big this plans. year. Speaking of big plans, um, I have a super secret podcast in the works, um, and you will no doubt hear about that. Probably, well, probably not on this podcast, but I'm sure it will. You'll be unable to avoid the deluge on social media and on the split screen site whenever that launches. But that's hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Ooh, exciting! Yeah, you're gonna guest star on it. You're gonna, I, yay! We, we we thought you'd be the perfect guy for that particular episode. Cool, right? right. We're done. This is over. Wait. This is the end. This is. <laughs> That's, you can't. You can't end. You can end the podcast. Like, we're done. Okay. Doesn't matter. Like we we just have.